Aloha! Welcome to the Bishop Museum's Library and Archives. I'm Hadley Anderson. I am DeSoto Brown, the Bishop Museum historian. Throwback so, Thursday. It's Throwback Thursday, and what are we going to look at today? So, well, um, there's a hot topic going around these days, and that is rail in Honolulu, rail transportation. Yeah. Well, because there is a rail system under construction right now on the end of Oahu under a great deal of controversy, but I bet you didn't know, and maybe a lot of other people didn't know, that we've had rail systems on the island of Oahu before, and actually there were two major ones. We know we had the railroad. We had the railroad, the ORNL, the Oahu Railway and Land Company, and that went from downtown Honolulu all the way around the Waianae Coast around in a point up to Kahuku, but there was also another totally separate rail system in the city of Honolulu itself, in the urban area. That was called the Honolulu Rapid Transit and Land Company, otherwise known as HRT. Oh, okay. So that's what we're gonna talk about. And I'm gonna show you and you photographs of the rail system that once existed. Now, let me just make it very clear. We're talking about the rail system we're talking about now that's under construction is an elevated railway that mm -hmm. will be above traffic. The system I'm talking about is what's called at grade, meaning it was in the streets with traffic. Is that like the cable cars in San Francisco? Kind of like the cable cars. Um, the cable cars are famous because lots of people know about them. It's a totally different technology though. Oh. Um, they do run on rails, but the cable cars in San Francisco actually have a cable running underground that pulls them up. The system I'm talking about, which was more common, which was used in cities all over the world, and in fact many cities still have them, is an electric railway. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. Now, first of all, there's, had to get to see that. That doesn't look very electric to me. <laughs> it's not electric because, in fact, before the electric streetcar system existed, there was an animal powered streetcar system, and this is a picture of it. It was called the Hawaiian Tramways. And it as you can see, is a little is a little rail car, and it runs on rails that are in the street. They're they're like train rails, but it's pulled by mules. And since it is animal powered, it can't be very large because mm -hmm. the animals can't pull something very big. So this is a very little tiny system, but it's, this is the first mass transit system that was uh, in in existence in Honolulu. It started in the 1880s. Wow. Okay, so then. Um, there was a big switch in the 1890s and early 1900s okay. to the electric streetcar system. And this is a cartoon from the Honolulu Advertiser. It was called the Pacific Commercial Advertiser at that time. And it shows the interaction of the mule-drawn streetcar on this side being pushed out of the way by the electric streetcar system, which got started in about 1900. And so for a few years, both systems were in use, but finally the HRT purchased all of the assets of Hawaiian tramways and put them out of business. Mm -hmm. And from then on, it was just in a strictly electric streetcar world. Well, I imagine that's a lot safer for the animals. If you Absolutely, I mean, that, and that's an important thing. I mean, it's a really difficult life. For, a beast of burden is a really difficult life. Today we would be totally against it, mm -hmm. but at the time that's what people thought. It was just okay. kind of normal. Um, now, the electric streetcar system is a, is a very wonderful thing because in lots of ways it's extremely convenient, but for the company, for HRT, there were a lot of extra expenses. First of all, they had to have their own electric generating plant, and that is what this photograph is of. So first of all, they had to run a whole electric system. Oh, wow. Secondly, they had to install all the tracks in the street and maintain all those tracks. And third, the way this worked was a system of overhead wires that were installed above the street that the streetcar connected to. That's how it got its power. So the electric power is up in the wires so that it's not where you can get electrocuted mm -hmm. just walking over the rails. It comes from above. And this photograph in 1924 is what some of those early streetcars look like. So if you see up above here. See a grid pattern. You can see the grid of those wires that uh, had to be above the street. And then the streetcar connected, it had a, it had a pole, or poles, uh, two poles, that um, attached to those wires. And as it ran along, the, um, essentially the pole just got dragged along the wire and that made the connection. Mm -hmm. So as you can also see here, the streetcars were open. They initially didn't have any sides on them at all, so you could just get on and off anywhere you wanted on the streetcar. 
um, and that made it convenient, but it also was really dangerous as automobile traffic came into existence in the early 1900s because people would step off the streetcar without looking right into the path of a car and get hit. So that was a major problem. Now, here's the interior of the streetcar. Oh. So here's what it looked like if you rode a streetcar. This is a picture from 1922. And I mentioned that uh, initially all the sides were open. Well, that's kind of nice and breezy, but it also, if it's raining and windy, then you get wet and cold. But they gradually enclosed the streetcars. But also, because you could get on and off anywhere initially, it meant that there had to be two people on the car to run it because one guy actually propelled the car back and forth, stopped it, started it, etc. But then there was another separate person, conductor, who went around and got money from people. I was wondering if you could step on and off, yeah. you could pay for that. That's how you pay. Well, exactly. No, that's a good point. So initially, you, there had to be another guy on there who would go up to you. Like on a train, if mm -hmm. you ride a regular train on the mainland, the guy comes and gets your ticket and puts a little hole in it. That's what they had on the streetcars, too. Oh, nice. But, so gradually it was decided, well, it's a lot, it's a lot more sensible. Okay, so this is a photograph of a uh, streetcar in the late 1930s, and at that time they had remodeled them. So they figured out that it makes a lot more sense to have just one entrance and one exit. And when you get on the streetcar, you pay yourself, <laughs> and nobody has to come around and get your payment, and then you get off. And um, also they put in windows and other things that made it more comfortable, so it wasn't quite so windy and cold if it was a stormy day. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem with streetcars and the problem with anything that runs at grade is that, first of all, it's intermingled with all the traffic. So if there's a lot of traffic, the streetcars get caught in the traffic jams as well. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that the streetcar tracks were out in the middle of the street. So to get on and off, you had to cross over lanes of traffic to do it, which also was very um, scary sometimes. People got hurt. Right. Killed. Still better than stepping off in the middle of traffic with the Absolutely. Walls. No, no, that's <laughs> a little true. Bit better. It's a little better, but it's still dangerous. And the other thing was, too, if there was anything that, um, if a tree fell down or if there was a fire or something, all the streetcars have to come to a stop because they can't go around it. Oh. They're stuck to their tracks. So that was why all of the streetcars were eliminated in Honolulu by 1941. And that's pretty early. Lots of, lots of uh, other cities continued uh, with their streetcar systems for a lot longer. But all of the streetcars were replaced by either regular diesel buses or a bus like this one. This is a photograph from 1941, 42. Looks like a regular bus. But I see that pole coming but out But you see the pole at the top because it's an electric bus. So it doesn't run on the tracks anymore, but it does continue to use those overhead electric wires that the streetcars use. The nice thing about this is it's quiet. Oh. Doesn't make a lot of noise because it's an electric it's an electric engine. So it's not a diesel engine and it's not putting out a lot of fumes either. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there are systems like this uh, still in use in a lot of places. Uh, San Francisco has cable cars, but it also has electric buses too. Cool. But wow. um, again, so for HRT, um, eventually they decided we don't want to run any electric system. We don't want to have to deal with any overhead wires. They eliminated the, the electric buses in 1957, and after that, they just had regular buses. And the street, uh, the HRT company continued as a private company until 1971, and then the city and county of Honolulu bought it out mm -hmm. and turned the system into a municipal system, which is what we have now. And finally, well, there were all those streetcar tracks right. still in the street from back when there were streetcars, and so. They had to go around and dig them all out. Huh. And so this is a photograph of Kalakaua Avenue in Waikiki. You see a little bit of Diamond Head right there. Um, with the streetcar tracks being pulled out in 1946. So that's the end of the streetcar system. But, um, as I said, as we all know, we're coming back to a rail system, but it's going to be very different from the one that uh, I just showed you. Right, definitely not going to be along our traffic it's going to be along the traffic routes but it's going to be not Above with traffic. the traffic <laughs> exactly and that's one of the really crucial aspects of this and um anyway so it shall go that is the way things evolve things are always changing things are always different
things are always different. But it seems like we go to the back to the past a lot, man, to revisit some, some of these ideas. ideas. Yeah, sometimes, and I mean, like electric cars now. We have electric cars. Well, yeah. when cars were first invented in the late 1800s up through about 1910, 1915, there were electric cars then, too. Mm -hmm. And um, they went out of use for a variety of reasons, um, and now they come back. So... What goes around comes around. There you go. <laughs> I think that's a perfect end to a Throwback Thursday. Uh, okay, so that's the end of Throwback Thursday for this week. And um, we are talking to you from Bishop Museum Archives. And please visit our website, www.bishopmuseum.org, for any events that are coming up or just to see what we're all about. Yeah, yeah. And come see us and keep track of what we're doing because we're always doing wonderful, fun, interesting things. So until next Throwback Thursday, everybody. Aloha. Aloha.